Hey all, Steve here. I'm inside this time starting this video because I kind of like, I need to, I need to fix correct of wrong. It wasn't even wrong, but there's a ton of new subscribers to the channel and I just did a really poor job, I guess, introducing the DC2 project to the channel. Um, I got, I got various comments like, Steve, what are you doing with the car? So that's what I want to cover in this video, how it started and then, you know, where it's going. That's what we're going to accomplish today with this video is what the goal is for the DC2. First, I need to address the elephant in the room. That is not clickbait. Like that thumbnail picture you saw, that was the auction picture on Yahoo Auctions. That is how the guy, I don't know, he just like, whatever, I was going to put this up there as it sits. Like that, that was how he listed it. That's how I found it. And I was like, oh, I, I can smell a good project coming and, and maybe a deal is probably the deal was more enticing than the project. So anyway, like I messaged him, I asked for more pictures. He was really honest when he responded and he sent really clear detailed pictures that I felt like, yo, I had inside information, like the dude seems honest. I got good detailed pictures of what's really going on. And then, and then the last day of the auction, on the last day of the auction, he pulls it out from wherever it was parked, brings it over, gets it power washed, it power washes the engine bay, power washes the exterior, like, all of a sudden the car looks the car looks pretty darn good. So I went from thinking, yo, I'm gonna be the only one silly enough to bid on this thing and probably win it maybe on the cheap, to this is like a diamond in the rough, you know, barn fine car looking thing, whatever. And sure enough, like the auction went high, I lost the car. I wasn't going that high. And then a few weeks later, saw the car again with like the updated cleaned up pictures on Yahoo. Apparently the original bitter flake after winning the auction so yeah like i won the auction i'm not going to go into it this time how much like i paid for it maybe i'll wait until like it's all road legal and repaired and like actually running because then that's like a full picture otherwise it seems like i got a deal which it, it might not be a deal when we're all said and done so yeah i won it it seemed perfect for my plans and like i just had to get the car home so we go pick up the car believe it or not it fired right up <laughs> seller was a nice guy uh, he did say had a dead alternator it needed a new timing belt and I asked him because like hey like I don't know anything about you know Integra's and DC2's it's missing the like the AC trim panel and the controls and all that stuff and I, like I don't know what I'm doing so I was like you know what 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 controls do I need for this thing and he's like oh as long as it's auto aircon or auto AC then like it should work and I'm like cool not so cool the auto AC where like you can you can slide it to say what temperature you want versus just like hot or cold. The ones that are auto AC are like a million freaking dollars. Apparently they go bad all the time. I don't know, but that's a worry for another day. He was genuinely like a nice guy who liked Integra's as like his hobby car thing or whatever. Like he had a left-hand drive DC4 Integra and this car that I had just bought was supposed to be the donor car for that car. So like that gave me good confidence. Like, oh, the engine and drivetrain must be solid in this thing if, if he's gonna, you know, if he's willing to use it for his own car. But yeah, like life, kids, married, work, whatever, just got busy. He sold his DC4 and then he was gonna hang on to this thing and like get it going someday. But like he just, you know, never did. And so like he finally sold it and then I picked it up. So meeting him and, you know, kind of hearing the backstory, like it made me feel pretty good about the car uh, as a whole. So here's some footage from when I got it home. I did like a walk around peeked at stuff and kind of saw what was really going on. So let's take a look at that now. All right, so starting in the engine room, this is a FRP hood. I'm gonna need to do some like hood pins or something for it because I don't trust that driving down the road, that's for sure. Engine wise, it is a B18C. It is not the Type R engine but it is a DC2 chassis. It is the SIRG model, DC2 chassis. So it is a DC2, it's just one step below the Type R. We're missing the air compressor for the AC system. The power steering belt has been cut and removed. And I think the alternator, the seller said the alternator is dead. So I'm sure the battery is now dead because we were using battery power to move it here, but the engine does run. I literally didn't check out anything. Like this was just an auction purchase from Yahoo. So hope it's okay. A lot of maintenance to be done on it that's for sure brake fluid looks pretty clear 
We have ABS, the full stock intake is there, uh, which is cool. Rust wise, it doesn't look bad from what I can see up here. It's an S80 transmission. Nice earthing grounding stuff that'll be coming off and then probably some sort of ground amplification system from the 90s that was cool. Hopefully the power steering actually works once the pump is hooked up. It's got a type R strut bar. I think that's about it. More people are gonna know more about than I am, but that's a good base. Exterior wise, we have the ITR, Integra Type R front lip on it. These are the SIRG headlights. So they're the chrome housing headlights versus blacked out. This is the special edition foggy yellow version of it. Otherwise stock body, straight, straight body, which is excellent. Tires are beyond shot and the brakes, at least these are grabbing a bit. That is not the case in the rear. Four wheel disc brakes, but nobody is home in the rear. So we're gonna need an overhaul in the rear. Tires are about ready to explode. Rust wise, it looks pretty good from what you can see. Maybe somebody knows the reference or the anime for that. I'm not sure. On the rear end, we have a Type R spoiler with a Type R trunk, which means the seller was explaining this to me, but there's no washer arm. It's Type R glass too, so there's no wiper arm in the glass. So it's a Type R hatch. There we go, because it's not a trunk, it's a hatch car. Man, Honda guys are gonna get mad at me for how little I know. We got some sweet chromed out Euro tails. Muffler, unknown maker, but it's not terribly loud. I can probably put a silencer in because it's got the hole for it and then maybe pass shock in with that. It doesn't stick out past the bumper, so not my ideal look, but maybe it'll be okay for inspection purposes. Again, on this side, clean, straight body, not much to it. Suspension wise, uh, we can't see it, can we? But it's supposed to have Bilstein uh, C-Link, I think they are coilovers on it, which is why it is, uh, it's pretty darn low, but they're probably garbage. Hopefully they're not leaking and then they might pass shock in. The paint is quite dead, so it's gonna need a wax or something to bring it back a little bit. Um, and the hood is obviously a different color. The trunk is different colors. So if the trunk is original paint to a Type R, that would be what, like championship white? And this is whatever the SIRG models came with. So maybe not championship white. Not going to make a huge fuss about that. All right, on the interior, we'll start at the rear. Definitely needs a good cleaning, but he included the original wing that came with the car when he got the car, he said. So it must be a different trunk because there's no, or different hatch because there's no holes from that sort of wing. And it looks like we got some carpet for the rear, which is cool, and the wood piece. Strut bar is a TNB, so maybe Tanabe. Back seats are there. The channels need a good clean, but I don't see a bunch of rust. I see a bunch of muck, but not a bunch of rust. Then we got some window visors, which, hey, they always look cool. But the biggest selling point about this car, and the reason I kind of went for it, was no sunroof. I guess we'll get in on the passenger side because uh, <laughs> apparently there's something up with the mechanism for the door lock. It locks and unlocks, but the handle won't open. And it's got a dirty interior with the missing AC surround vent stuff otherwise interiors you know so so for the age got some little distortion there needs a really good clean because it's been sitting a long time but you know for the most part it needs a little carpet i don't know what that is and i don't know why i needed it integra floor mats any hidden treasures uh there you go what do we got is this a gate ball ball? Yeah, reuse ecology Cairo, and that's what that says. It's reuse ecology Cairo, knee set. Hmm. I have no idea what that is. And then, like every other old Japanese car. A whole bunch of screw clips and whatever just get thrown in the center console. Um, more stuff in the glove box. A battery tie down, bolts, a SRS, that's the clock spring for the steering wheel, which I might need to hook that back up. Oh, what's this cup holder? Hey, there we go. 
the seat belts are loose, so they must have had seat belts out of it. I don't see holes for a roll cage. Hmm. So yeah. I'm not sure what they were doing. And from the driver's side, again what you're working with. Old steering wheel, some old school foot pedals, GT spec. And there's one more. One more in the back seat. Razo foot pedals, those were hot. Anybody want those, holler at your boy. Another bucket seat. The seats are like faded, but not in terrible, terrible shape. So they will live on in something, I'm sure. Yeah, we got a back seat, but it needs a good clean for sure. But I kind of worry more about like these areas and I don't, I don't know, I don't see. I need to get a hose and then flush everything out, but I don't see anything too worrying right now. Fingers crossed it doesn't change. There was a timing belt changed at 107,000 kilometers, so maybe almost 90,000 kilometers ago, and that was Heisei Junananen, which means 2005, I think, timing belt was changed, and the seller, the seller said, yeah, uh, probably changed the timing belt. All right, sitting in the interior, here's what we're working with. You can see an old, unmarked steering wheel. That's definitely going to go bye-bye. We're sitting at 199,000 kilometers. Hopefully it still works and hopefully it's accurate. This is exciting. I wasn't sure about this. See my shoulder and see the door. I'm just barely taller than the door in the bucket seat. I've got space up here. There you go, bald head for maximum clearance. I've got, what is that, like four inches up there? I mean, I got helmet space. I'm sitting pretty low. Like I thought I would be higher on the window line and that really kind of annoys me, but this feels pretty good. So it looked perfect for what I had planned, but I kind of like optimistically and naively said this. I don't know, on the whole, it's it's not a bad starting point. Yeah, so that's gonna prove to be very false. Uh, I don't know why I'm smiling about it because that's gonna be my time and my money later. But yeah, time is not nice to 90s Hondas, especially when they've just sat, you know, abandoned more or less. I wanna get it running, road legal, and and start enjoying it like ASAP. So I'm gonna start weekly progress uploads every Tuesday on the DC2 and I'm gonna call it, wait for this, this is really good. I'm gonna call it DC Tuesdays. Can you believe it? I came up with that myself. It's probably a hashtag somewhere, I have no idea. I like it, I'm gonna chip away at it and make some progress and get this thing running. So DC Tuesdays. So why did I buy the DC2 and what's the bigger plan for the build? <laughs> the car doesn't run uh, and I've never done any sort of like on track grip driving but flat out the goal for the project for me as a driver is a sub one minute lap at scuba like growing up watching the time attack coverage out of scuba like at the time they were trying to break the one minute barrier and like they were just dipping into the 58s and 59s like to me that just is burned in my mind as like the coolest performance milestone I've always enjoyed 90s Hondas from afar, like in magazines, when magazines were a thing and, you know, blogs, whatever. But like, I just didn't have an avenue that like I really connected with. At the time when I was younger, like they were usually super rusty. They had like bad rattle can paint jobs and they had a fart can exhaust. And I just chose to do that exact same thing in a 240SX. And then as I got older, I met some guys who were more into like the resto mod, rare JDM parts, OEM plus sh kind of show car scene. and. That is a level of budget that I cannot contend with. Like, <laughs> that, those guys are serious. Then finally, after relocating to Japan this past year, like, it kind of just, it clicked. Like, I was, you know, just watching YouTube, whatever. I saw some time attack stuff, searching Yahoo for a project, and I saw it was actually, like, a super clean EK sedan, but, you know, like, single overhead cam, and I was like, whoa, whoa. My mind was, like, pew, connecting the dots. I was like, Steve, like... <laughs> you can run scuba now. It was a way to experience Hondas and learn about Hondas, drive a Honda in like a fashion that like I truly was interested in. But yeah, in a lot of ways, I feel like I lucked out with the DC2 because it's not a Type R, right? But it has a B18, like the legendary B series engine. And the DC2 is like kind of heralded as one of the greatest front wheel drive chassis of all time. Again, mine's not a Type R. I understand there's extra chassis rigidity, blah, 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 blah. I have a B18 and a DC2, like, as a starting point, I couldn't be more pumped. I can't wait for the comments to tell me, like, you don't have a Type R. I understand I don't have a Type R, but 
I also don't have type R money. So there we have it. Like that's where this project is going. We're doing a sub one minute lap at Scuba someday. We have a lot of work to do as me as a driver on the car to get it set up. But that's the goal. Like that's where that project is going. I wanted to get that out there to give you guys a, you know, like a target of where we're going. If you have questions, put them down below. There's already a few episodes up on the channel of just, you know, checking the car out and getting stuff fixed and repaired. And more to come every Tuesday, DC Tuesdays. I'm going to leave it there. Much love. Be well.